And when you look back at all of that work, I imagine the scripts come to you through various different means, but the script for your, your new movie, Terminal, um, you didn't have to go that far to get that script, did you? No, it was literally on my kitchen bench. Um, I was living with quite a few people at the time, so uh, it wasn't, you know, it didn't so mysteriously pop up. A friend had it and a friend of ours wrote it, Vaughn Stein, um, who also directed the film. And I was just, yeah, kind of having a cup of tea and I was like, what is this? Started flicking through it and then I I got sucked in and then we thought, well, let's 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 make it. Let's, <laughs> let's see if we can make a film. It was actually the first film we produced. We made it uh, two and a half years ago. Yeah, so and, uh, and then did Tonya afterwards, but Tonya right. came yeah, out first. Right. I was going to say that you, um, you produce, it must be so much better for you when you've got a, when you see something. If you discover a script on a, on a kitchen table, and think, I want to do that, and also you've got that yeah. capacity to produce. So that was first, and then you, the production of I, Tonya was, was second. Mm-hmm. So when yeah, you saw yeah. that script, no, it was fun. It was you really saw fun. that. Uh, you, I mean, and I, th I think you said that you looked at the dialogue scenes, and there were pages and pages of dialogue scenes. And you thought, "Oh, this is this breaks the mold. This is interesting. This is." I'd look at it and think, "Oh God, there's so much to learn." <laughs> No, it was great. And at the time, I really wanted to do a play, and it read a lot like a play. Um, I think uh, Vaughn was very heavily, he loves Pinter, so there was a lot of dramatic Pinter pauses, and there was tons of dialogue, and it had that, that, that classic British banter, which I so love, and, and the rhythm of it was just fantastic. And uh, yeah, it was just a very unusual script. It was just so dark and weird, and um, I was kind of obsessed with Holy Motors at the time as well, so I was just like, let's, people need to make more weird movies. I love it. Well, it is, I mean, it is dark and weird, and the storyline is, is complex, so I'm going to let you sort of tell us what you can tell us about it. And to start with, you play Annie, don't you? So who, who is she and how does she fit into the plot? Yes. Annie, at first glance, is a uh, kind of a kooky waitress leading a double life, uh, who has, and she has a morbid fascination with death. I, um, she... Simon Pegg's character and I kind of spend all night chatting in a in a cafe and uh, discussing all the ways he could kill himself, um, which you know nothing makes Annie happier than discussing that. So uh, and then and then you kind of have Dexter Fletcher, Fletcher and Max Irons playing two assassins, um, kind of like a junior and a senior partnership, which is a very funny dynamic. Uh, especially with those two playing the characters, it's hilarious. And um, then you have a very eccentric janitor played by Mike Myers. Um, and then for, I think a lot of the movie, you're wondering how everyone kind of fits together. And then of course, at the end, everyone uh, kind of, everyone's paths. Well, it's always, it's always on. difficult because, you know, obviously knowing the film now and how much we can say and how much yeah. we can't say and, and you don't want to wreck it. Um, because there are some yeah. fantastic twists. It's like, you, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. No, it's fun. It was very much Vaughn wanted to kind of subvert the, the classic noir tropes and have the femme fatale. Um, however, in this updated version of a noir thriller, the femme fatale is very aware of the role that a femme fatale normally plays and yeah. plays into it a little bit. So that was fun to do and um, kind of the updated version of noir was to mix it with so much neon and kind of create this dystopian world that that is very bright and electric, but at the same time, you know, it's all a game of shadows. And it, it, yeah, it was just, it was fun because we weren't really beholden to any particular era. We could kind of cherry pick the, you know, classic 40s silhouettes and inject that into the costumes and, you know, the the winged eyeliner from that you see a lot in the 60s, but we do it with, like, a bright green. You know, whatever it was, yeah, whatever department fun. it was, we could have a lot of fun. It was great. And you did mention, before we went into the clip, Mike Myers. Now, do you know what? I didn't I didn't realise that Mike Myers had sort of retired, that he wasn't doing anything anymore. Um, but, but, but that is the case. Yeah, I think the last film he'd done was maybe seven years prior or something like that. I think it was uh, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, yeah, he hadn't done something for a while and it was just like a, we were like, we thought of him, because we, we kept discussing wanting to find like a, a character actor, someone who really would embrace like the physicality of such an eccentric character. And um, then everyone's like, where's Mike Myers at the moment? What's he doing? And we reached out and him and Vaughn talked for hours and hours and hours and, and then he was in. Was he, um, he's funny, because I was reading an interview that he did and, uh, and he, he said, can I go to the Margot Robbie party? His wife Kelly and son Spike came out first uh, to the filming. <laughs> Never realised Margot had such a strong Australian accent. 
So, uh, I mean, that made me laugh, because, of course, you were in Neighbours, and then you read further, and it says that a dialect coach wanted to make you sound less Australian in Neighbours. Is that true? That is true. My Australian accent was too strong even for Neighbours. They uh, had to soften it a little bit. I think the... The accent gets a little stronger. How are um, you? How are yeah, you now on the, like uh, so on the word it. home? Because that's a tricky one, isn't it? Home, yes. It's just, it, that's the one that always trips me up. I can't. It's really hard not to say home in an Aussie accent, no matter what I'm doing. So I have trouble with that word. But, well, you live. You've yeah, lived here my, for a I while. I have not... a much more refined accent now. I, think. I was going to say because, <laughs> well. yeah, but it wasn't in you know sort of Kensington or Chelsea or anywhere that we might expect to find Margot Robbie when she's living in the UK for a while. I mean, this is in Clarm, a you know darling, Clarm. Yeah, in Clam in Clapham. <laughs> she's in Clapham. Um, so uh, so you yeah. didn't learn to say home whilst you were in Clapham. Home. Uh, no, but it did help living with a lot of English roommates. That definitely... And now my accent's kind of, yeah, more, more diluted than it used to be because my husband's English, but we live in America. Most of my friends are English, but still all my friends are back in Oz and I go home. And if I'm home for, you know, or even talking to someone on the phone, the accent comes back. Comes back, yeah. As it fast. should. Exactly. As it should.